Hello, everybody, and welcome to day number 16 of Vlogmas. We're hiking on the trail today. I broke out the DGI gimbal. You look behind me, there is dad. We're hiking at Chautauqua. Uh, today we're gonna talk about my worst disc golf moments ever. My dad had the idea, why don't you make your best disc golf moments ever? But instead, I wanna tell you what my worst are. And we're gonna talk about the top five. And the reason we're doing top five is because there's five apparent ones in my opinion. And then afterwards, talk a little bit about mindset and why it's important to fail and reflect on your failures. So let's do that. All right, I'm using this gimbal and it's really hard to set up and it's really annoying. We're gonna jump into the top five moments, top five worst moments. And number five is the MVP open or Vibram open from 2017. I was like in fifth place to start the day. Not bad, but I didn't really have any expectations of winning. It was a terrible weather, absolutely awful, but I just start shredding. Uh, I'm like eight under going into 18 and I'm winning the tournament, but Ricky's like uh, one or two holes behind me. So he has some to play and he's looking at the scores. I throw a great drive on 18 and basically I just need to put it on the island to put pressure on Ricky to make the shot. If he birdies out, then he wins. I, know, I might not know the exact stats. Thomas Gilbert's watching, he knows, he knows every stat. Um, but play the footage. As you can see, lining up, throwing a P2 Anheuser, where it's a clear forehand shot. I shank it, don't get on the island, and I get pretty pissed off. And I remember afterwards, I was mentally a wreck because I just wanted to, you know, I wanted the satisfaction of putting on the island, making a clutch shot when it matters. Nope, that one still haunts me. Number four. Number four is at 2016 USDGC. I played, I played this shot before. It was a uh, hole 13, third round, which I didn't know was the final round. This is the year germ won. I was winning the tournament by three strokes. I just decide to start throwing discs in a parking lot. And that is so annoying because, you know, if I just was able to squeak it out, then who knows? I might be the US champion from 2016, but unfortunately, that's just not how it went down. And I know I was pretty mentally wrecked afterwards. These are painful moments in my memory bank. Moment number three was last year at the USDGC. It's when I Punch the ground on hole number 16 of the third round. Me and USDGC, third round, we don't get along, it seems like. I was winning the tournament yet again. I missed this you know, short putt. I had to, to avoid the, quote, mo mozzarella sticks. I missed a really short putt on 16. And I know, you know, it's not, that putt's important, but it's not the end of the world if I miss it. For some reason, I was just really frustrated. Third round, I was throwing a lot of great shots, but you know, I was kind of losing some mental focus and I was just getting frustrated. So I punched my whale sack that was on the ground and got a boxer's fracture. And that's that was terrible because you know, I couldn't play the final round when I was in the lead. And in retrospect, you know, it was a really great opportunity to maybe win another major. What made it really bad was I feel like I embarrassed myself greatly. I embarrassed this mania and I was I was in position to win the national tour title back to back years. I got to do none of that. Just I got to do a lot of self reflection. You know, I still think about it to this day. We'll talk about it later as I believe overall it was a good thing. Moment number two. This one really stunk. 2019 Portland Open. I was on chase card. I didn't really feel like I was in position to win the tournament, but at Blue Lake, I got on a heater. I was burning through the course. Got to first place like on 16 or 17. 
And all I had to do was 17 is the par five. I had to birdie 17 and then par 18 or vice versa. So I parred 17 and I was in a easy position to birdie hole number 18. I threw a decent upshot, an upshot that I wouldn't think twice about if it was any other round. Drew Gibson was also playing very well on the card. I set up the putt and I don't want to take too much time because I don't want to overthink it. Throw the putt on this elevated 18, slips the left side, toilet bowls around, spits out, and I do like this back somersault, give the ground the people's elbow, and oh, I was mentally a nightmare afterwards. Complete and total nightmare, because I knew what I just did. I basically choked the tournament, and then I was basically trying to calm myself down for the next hour before I went into the playoff with Drew, talking to my one of my mental coaches. I remember talking to my dad about it, and the first thing I hear when I called was just a scream, and I couldn't handle it, so I hung up the phone, and then I called one of my other guys. What the? Bleep. Uh-huh. So that was, that was absolutely brutal. And I was just not in the mental space to handle going into a playoff. I threw a roller on one, straight out of bounds. Drew Gibson won the tournament. And the good thing he, the thing that Drew did was after, he just went to the practice basket and putted and was ready to go. So I applaud Drew for that. He was the bigger professional at the moment. All right, and now, and now, gosh, I hope you guys aren't dizzy because my gimbal absolutely sucks. Like what is going on right now? I'm just trying to keep it focused on my face. It's part of it, organic Eagles vlogs. This don't get a DJI gimbal. Thanks Clay Smith for giving this to me, but it's, you know, it's past its prime. Let's just say that. Okay, number one. This was the 2017 Aussie Open. And I think it's more of just how it went down. I was winning the tournament from start to 71 holes in, holding off, holding off Ricky, shooting, averaging like 1090 golf. And the final hole is this, this uphill island. <laughs> oh my gosh, I just hit like a massive putt the previous hole to hold Ricky off to keep him to keep them behind by one stroke. It's a hole I've buried every time leading up to the final round. Throw an FD3, nervous as all heck. Shank it wide, OB. Basically go to the drop zone, watch Ricky tap in his easy birdie too, and he ends up being the Aussie Open champion. And I remember afterwards going out on the course, calling my dad, and literally crying. Like, I felt so down on myself. I was like, I don't wanna do, I don't wanna play disc golf anymore. I don't wanna play disc golf if this is what it does to me. So much hurt, so much pain. And I don't really think you hear Paul or Ricky talk about the times where they're literally crying afterwards. Like, I'm gonna be honest, if you are wanting to become a professional disc golfer, you're gonna have some serious heartbreak. So there was my top five hard, heartbreaking moments. But that being said, if you're looking to become a professional disc golfer, you know, it's a very rewarding lifestyle. You'll see the world, you'll meet great people, and if you work hard, you'll achieve great things. But there's gonna be moments that absolutely suck and moments that are going to make you want to quit and not come back to disc golf. There's plenty of people who let those moments overtake them and they don't come back and they just live the same life over and over again. And they, they dread about you know the, the one putt they missed, how their life could have been different. You gotta take full accountability for this. The one thing that I'm proud of and I, I think I still do is every time I have a tough moment, the first thing I think of now is how I can prepare better for that not to happen again. So what I'm saying is basically 
take full accountability for your mess ups, your mishaps, and make them better. You're in the driver's seat of your own life. Learn from your mistakes. It's all cliche, but you're never going to grow if you don't do that. Like, I can look back to 2017. I had two heartbreaking moments. I can look back to last year after the Portland Open. I hated that so much. So guess what I did the next week? I turned it around and I went to win the Beaver State Flank. I messed up Aussie Open. What did I do? I trained next year and I won three national tours. I won the uh, national tour title. I won a major. So, and that's all because I was sick of settling for the same results. That was a dog on the trail freaking out. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is you're in the... This is what happens. This is what happens on the vlog. Vlogging is not easy, guys. So you could, you understand what I'm saying. I hope so. We're going to go over the giveaway. We're going to finish this hike. Got anything to say, Dad? Yes, even if that happens on the trail, you just roll with it. It's just what happens. Life happens. Blank happens. We all know that. And even if your gimbal sucks, you still shoot. Guys, don't get a DJI Osmo. Get the Osmo Mini. It's so much easier. I can't stand this thing. Hopefully it was not too too dizzy, but you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna upload it because that's gonna be memorable for me on my side. All right, let's go to the giveaway now. Okay, before we jump into the giveaway, I just wanna tell you guys I'm editing that video and it's making me so mad. The wind noise, that gimbal shaking, or the like the the noise that the gimbal makes, it was just Absolutely so annoying like hearing the dog screech. I think it was a good video idea, but oh my gosh, it just gives me a total headache. But I think there are some good moments in there. It was not bad enough for me to completely junk it, but yeah. Um, and you know, at the end, I was kind of jumbling my words, I feel like, because there was people literally stopped and I felt like they were listening to me talk and it was really just distracting. So one thing I'll say before I get to the giveaway is it's almost like a little technique. When I say work hard, that's cliche, but the way, what, what it is for me is one YouTube channel I really love is Yes Theory. Uh, they've done some really cool short films about like, um, you know, their, their motto is seeking discomfort. One video that really made an impact on me is they spend uh, a week with Wim Hof and they do this crazy stuff and Basically what seek, seeking discomfort does, uh, this can mean this can mean working out, this can just mean going to do something that you don't want to do. And the value of that is so immense because it puts you out of your comfort zone. And then once you do that thing, it starts building confidence. So I'm gonna throw it back to uh, you know 2017. That was the time where I, coming off that year, there was a lot of bad stuff happening in my disc golf game. I lost the Aussie Open. I threw that shot at MVP Open. But then I went to Switzerland and I started training and working hard every day. And you know, you can comment on what you will, but that changed my mentality because I almost created this mental cookie jar. So when I was in a tough situation, I could go back and be like, okay, I've gotten through a tough this tough situation before and I'm gonna use that to help me get through the one that I'm currently in. Using the failures as motivation, but also keeping a log of all your successes. You don't wanna crawl up your own behind and just reminisce and talk about the good old days, no. But some of those past successes, even if it's a small thing, you may, it can be the smallest thing as, I went on a run last week. I made this putt. I've birdied this hole before. You can always use that as confidence moving forward. That's why working hard is so meaningful to getting you where you need to go. It's seeking discomfort and building confidence. That's the way I look at it. Hopefully that that uh, is a little bit better explanation. Uh, I would like to do you know, a video all on mindset, but we'll see, because I still have a long way to go. It's, it's just me constantly figuring it out. And I wanted to make this video just because I want to remember these bad moments and know where I was and I hope I'm never there again. The only way to do that is push harder so you can reach new heights. All right, 
Yesterday, I asked you guys, what was your favorite disc golf video you have ever watched? And the winner is Zachary Corbett. Best video has to be the invisible string. If anyone hasn't seen it, I highly recommend. All right, Zachary, you won this here Primal Run Neo Enigma. Message me on Instagram or Facebook to claim it. And that's a little shout out for my buddy, Jan Boss. Uh, he's over in Germany. He created a Frisbee documentary. I believe it's free. Um, if it is free, check the description down below. And it is a, it's a great move documentary, like very well done documentary about the, the history of Frisbee. It's got disc golf, it's got freestyle, ultimate, all that, all that jazz. So, okay. So moving into tomorrow's giveaway, we have this Iron Samurai 2 up for grabs. And the question I'm gonna ask you guys, what is the best book you have ever re read or a book that has made an impact on your life? And I'm gonna recommend this book right here, David Goggins, Can't Hurt Me. I just got done listening to it and it is having a tremendous impact on me. It has changed my mindset for the better, I believe. It teaches you how to deal with adversity and come out of it, basically be a person like no one else. So I highly recommend it. And I'm looking forward to seeing some of the book recommendations uh, down in the comments below. And you know, it could win you a disc. So I appreciate it, guys. And until next time, keep on dreaming and peace.